Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you lift your hands and worship the Lord tonight? Thank God. What a joy it is to serve our Jesus, to know that God is for us, to know that God is with us. Father, tonight we joyfully worship you. We joyfully give thanks and praise to you. We joyfully lift up and glorify the wonderful, precious name of Jesus. Oh God, your presence is here with us tonight. We just want to take this time to give you the honor and the glory and the praise. You've been so good to us. You've been so awesome, so wonderful. We're just thankful for your amazing grace. Amazing grace has saved the wretch like me. How excellent is your name, O God. We praise you and bless you. O wonderful Savior, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your goodness and mercy, O God. Thank you for your blessings. So we are royalty in God. It's good 
We'll be reading tonight from Isaiah chapter 40. I know pretty much is a very familiar verse of scripture for most of us, all of us probably. Isaiah 40 verse 28. said, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Very familiar but powerful verse of scripture, or verses. Because in all of it, it speaks of the power of God, that God doesn't get weary. He doesn't faint. He doesn't quit. Aren't you glad that you call God? I need some help. He's like, I'm, I'm tired. I've been working all day. <laughs> I've been helping people all day long. And there's been some help, needy people. And now you need me. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> oh, no. We got a God that doesn't get tired. Amen. Amen. And God that doesn't get tired. He said in verse 31, I read again. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And with the help of the Lord tonight, and there's a different kind of message for tonight, but I want to preach about patiently waiting on God. Patiently waiting on God. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Mark, would you please pray, sir? Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each of Father, let us not only be hearers of the word, but also do it. Father, let us take this message, apply it to our life, and do what is pleasing in your sight, giving you all the honor and glory. Father, bless the message and the messenger in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. I want to preach about patiently waiting on the Lord. And this might be a message that I need most of the time because we need to wait on God. We need to wait on God. A lot of times we, um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to wait. It's hard to wait, especially when we have to make a decision. We want to do things. We want to get things done. And adrenaline is pumping. Blood is rushing to us. And, and a lot of times it's the hardest thing to do is to just, well, let me just wait and see what God wants. You know, that's the worst thing you can tell somebody you're trying to make a purchase and say, let me go pray for a little bit. No, 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 we don't want you to pray. <laughs> let's do it now. <laughs> let's, do, let's do it now. No, no, he'll be here tomorrow. If it's not here, that means uh, it's not mine. <laughs> we'll go back, we'll pray, and we'll come back and we'll make a decision. They don't want to hear that. They want, to, they want you to jump when they have you right then and ready to go. They want you to make a decision. But waiting on God is a blessing. It's, it's hard, but it's a blessing. It's uh, one of the hardest things to do. It, it's much easier, I will say, to rise up and go out to battle, fight the enemy, do things, than to just sit still and wait until God said, okay, now you can go. Waiting requires a lot of patience, a lot of faith. The two things that we struggle with a lot of time is what's involved in waiting on God. Patience, how I many you're very patient? <laughs> exactly. How I many you struggle with faith? Exactly. exactly. And that's the two things that is required when it comes to waiting on God. Those are the two things that are put to the test the most because we have to sit there and wait in prayer or whatever it is that we are, we are endeavoring to do and, and just wait. God, what do you want? What is it that you want me to do, Lord? Or how do you want me to proceed with this? decision or how do you want me to go forward with this and I know everybody I, I encourage you to learn how to follow God because he may you know, guide us in different ways he may lead us in different ways um, a lot of times especially in preaching and preparing like you know I had something totally different to preach this morning 
And I prayed and I said, man, I don't feel that. I don't feel that message. I don't feel it at all. So I got up around 4.35 this morning praying, seeking God, waiting on God. And then another one came, <laughs> the one I preached this morning. Or that one that, that felt more importantly, that's the one that God wanted me to preach. And we needed some good news. And, and so sometimes it's easy to say, okay, well, I got it all put together. Let's go. But God must say, no, just wait. I got something different. <laughs> I have something different. I want you to do it a, diff- a different way. I want, I'm already working something out, and you just need to be patient. Ooh, that's a tough one. Be patient. Just wait. Waiting strengthens us and makes us better warriors of the cross. It is in the waiting that we find out what we are made of, and it is also where we experience the power of God the most. I love the scripture in the old, in, 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 not the old, the New Testament. The Bible said in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, Jesus told the disciples they were pumped up and ready to go. They wanted to conquer and take over. They want power. They want to say, Lord, are you going to at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said, it's not for you to know the time or the season. He said, well, you will receive power. And he told him, he said, go to Jerusalem and wait. Go to Jerusalem and wait. And while they were there waiting, the Bible said in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, And when, they, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it, fell, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There they were, the disciples obeying God to wait on Him. They went back to Jerusalem and they began to pray, get up to the upper room and pray and seek the Lord and wait before they ever went out and tell anybody anything about God or do any work for God. They just went there and wait, patiently waiting on God. And as they were praying and waiting, the Bible said God poured out the Holy Ghost. The power of God came. I wonder what would have happened. And we know there were 500 of them that that Jesus sent back. There were, there were over 500 of them that, that, that went to Jesus or went out with Jesus when they saw him ascended up into heaven. But the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, there was only 120. Only 120 had the patience to wait. Only 120 had the patience to just wait on God because that's what God said. And when that day came, they got the power. They got the power. The others didn't because they were not there waiting on the Lord. They just went out to do things their own way. Maybe they said, man, this is too long. We've been waiting a whole day or two days or whatever it is. But the Bible said it wasn't until God was ready to pour out His Spirit. And as those 120 waited there in the upper room, God began to give them power. They began to receive of the Spirit of God like never before. Never had it been shared or or seen in Scripture where God poured out His Spirit in such a miraculous way. 120 disciples receiving power from on high, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, revealing the heart of the people in their own language, telling them things that nobody else could have told them because God was working through them. You see, when we wait on God, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Power comes how many times we will be much more endued with power if we wait in prayer first and then go out and do what God wants us to do. If we will pray and seek the Lord, as one man said, I, I pity the man that work without prayer. I pity the man that, I put in different words, I just put it that way. But pretty much is what he was saying. He said, it's, 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 it's very ineffective to work without first consulting God and praying and seeking God and what God will have us to do. We need to wait on the Lord. Amen. We need to wait on the Lord. The blessing came while they were sitting and waiting. God even did the same thing to Israel when he was bringing them into the promised land and he brought them to the Jordan River. And he said, I'm going to give you Jericho, but you're going to have to wait on me. I'm going to, I'm going to let you conquer this land. This land is going to be yours. This city is going to be yours. You will get the victory over this nation, even though it's all walled up and it's, 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 it's highly fortified. God said, I will give you the victory, but you have to wait on me. And so he told him, he said, go and walk around the city and come back to your camp and just sit there and wait. (laughs) Right? That's all he said. Just do it. And then maybe they're thinking, man, this is the weirdest thing ever. Walk around this city, all these people looking at us. 
we look foolish, we look stupid, if you will, in their, in their sight. Second day, do the same thing. Come back and sit. Don't do anything. Don't even say a word. <laughs> that would have been hard for some people. <laughs> Walk around a whole city without saying anything. <laughs> they couldn't complain. They couldn't do anything. They had to keep it all in. Patience. He was building patience and faith. Two things important to wait in the Lord. Patience and faith. And then he did it the third day, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. And then on the seventh day, he said, okay, walk around it seven times. Don't say a word. Just go around, come, stop, do it again, stop, do it again for seven times. But then when, he, when the command was given, when Joshua said, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, he said, shout, and the wall will come down. And as they patiently waited on God for, for seven days, Walking around, being in silence, just waiting on God. The Bible said when they shouted, the wall fell down. The wall fell down flat. It didn't crumble. It just fell right over so that they can walk over it and destroy their enemies. God gave them the victory because they patiently waited on the Lord. Now, what do you think would have happened if this decided to say, you know what, man, we've done this for three days. Let's just go in and, and conquer the land. Let's go and take over. We have our army. We're ready to go. Let's go in and do it. You think they would have won that city? Uh-uh. It would not have happened. It would have been destroyed. And, and it happened because right after that victory, they sinned against the Lord and they tried to take on a smaller nation, Ai, and they got whooped. <laughs> they got whooped bad. They had to run back and, and hide because they didn't wait on the Lord. They didn't do it their, their sin, but they didn't do it the way God wanted them to do it. And so when we seek the Lord and wait on God, there is victory. There is power. There is blessings when we wait on the Lord. When we do it and be patient and do the things that God wants us to do. Just like when Elijah the prophet or Eli, Elisha told Naaman, he said, Go and dip yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Dip yourself seven times in the Jordan River, and when you come up, you will be healed completely. He didn't want to do it. He wanted a quick fix. He wanted the prophet to come out and do a Benny Hinn show and wave his hand in the ear and spin around and call in the name of the Lord. That's what he said. I, I, I really thought this is what the prophet is going to do. He's going to come and wave his hand in the ear and call in the name of his God and smite me and I'll be healed. Well, Benny Hinn wasn't the wrong then, so he couldn't do it. Elijah was there, though, the real man of God. And he said, go dip yourself seven times in the River Jordan. Patience. He didn't want to do that. He was mad. He was getting ready to go back home as a leper. But thank God he had a servant that spoke some sense into him and said, you know, just do what the man of God said. If he asked you to do something big, you would have done it. If he asked you to throw a big party and feed 5,000 people, you would have done it. But he asked you to do the simple thing. Some patience required, just go down there and dip yourself. And, and he, had to, he had to dip himself seven times. Seven times, that's patience. Because you can imagine what was going through his mind when he dipped himself the first time he came back up. And he looked at himself and said, N nothing happened. Okay, I'm going to give it another try. And he went back down the second time and came back up. Nothing happened. Four, three, four, five times, six times. What if he had quit? What he had quit at the sixth time and said, well, I, 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 I um, indulge this man or whatever. I, I give him the time enough to do it six times. I don't think it's working. But no, he humbled himself and went down that seventh time. Patience. Patience and faith. He went down that seven times and he came back up and he looked. And behold, his skin was clean and pure. An incurable disease has just been cured with patience and faith in God. An incurable disease has just been cured. His man, who no one else could help, had this, this disease that were destroying him, was healed because he waited. He did it the way God told him. He said, do it seven times. You see, we experience the greatness and the blessings of God when we learn to wait on the Lord. When we learn to wait, as the scripture tells us, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. In other words, just wait and understand that I am still in control. Just wait and realize that I'm not going to let you down. If I tell you I will do something, I will do it. It may take a while, but if I promise you, if God make you a promise, you can rest assured with your patience and faith in God, it will come to pass. God doesn't lie. 
And God doesn't go back in his word. And God said, just wait on me. He said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Be still and know I am God, said the Lord. In other words, have some patience. Have some patience. Just wait. Be patiently waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. If God tell you to wait, wait. Don't go. Wait. If God tell you go, go. <laughs> right? Patiently wait on the Lord. Now listen to what he said there in our Bible reading, verse 28. He said, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. So you let us know. You say, haven't you heard about God? Haven't you heard about this great, this everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? He doesn't faint. And neither does he quit. He doesn't give up. He doesn't get tired. In verse 29, I love this. He said, he giveth power to the faint. He doesn't faint, but he gives power to us who are weary. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even your youth, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail or fall. But he said, they that wait on God. <laughs> right? He said, even the young men that think they can conquer the world and who they're invincible, they run long enough, they, they will get tired. They work hard enough and do enough push-ups. They're going to be laying on the ground, you know. They're going to get tired. They're going to quit. They, 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 will, they, will get, they will faint. But he said, but God is not like that. He said, God is not like that. So wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He said, wait and be blessed. Renew your strength. He said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So we see that as we wait on the Lord, there will be a renewing. As a Christian, this is very, very important because sometimes you can get wore out in, in, in the work of the Lord and serving God and, and all the things and the battles and everything that is coming against you. Sometimes it seems like, 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 like you know, Satan uses all these things and bring it against you to where he, he, he just wears on your spirit and cause your spirit to become weak and there's a need for a refreshing there's a need for a refreshing well how do I get refreshed in my spirit how do I get that fire burning again how do I get that zeal in my heart how do I get that encouragement to get up and keep going and keep praying and keep doing the will of the Lord well you got to get to that place where you sit in the presence of the Lord you have to get to that place where you spend some time in prayer and pour out your heart to God and say God God, renew me, revive me, strengthen me, Jesus. Come and, and, and kindle that fire once again. Oh, Lord God, the arms that are weary, strengthen it. The knees that are weak, give it strength, oh God. Oh, Lord God, give me what I need. It comes when we spend time waiting on God in prayer. When we get that time, carve out that good time for the Lord, patiently waiting on God, speaking to God, praying, praying in the Holy Ghost, and calling on the name of Jesus. Jesus and say, Lord God, revive me, Lord. Revive me, Jesus. Renew me. Let there be a refreshing move of God in my life that only comes when the Holy Ghost meet me in that place of prayer. Amen? Amen. We need the renewing from time to time. All of us do. Any soldier that's in the battle will get tired. Your arm's going to get tired. And some of us been in the military. You march long enough, you will get tired. You need that time of rest in the presence of the Lord. You need a time of relaxing. God, strengthen me one more time. And so the first blessing he said when we wait, patiently wait on the Lord, there will be a renewing. There will be a renewing. Sometimes people get weak in their faith and, and they give up. I've seen it over and over. People serve God for, for some time. And, and, and they don't understand it, that the devil is fighting them, and the devil is making warfare on their spirit. And a lot of times, they just, they just give up. They just quit. And you don't see them for a while. And then they come back. But it doesn't have to be that way if we wait on the Lord. Amen. Amen? It doesn't have to be that way if we wait on the Lord. He will renew our strength. He will give us the ability to keep going forward. We don't have to serve God for six months and quit. We don't have to serve God for a year and then take a break, a sabbatical from the Lord. No, you don't need a sabbatical from God. You need God. <laughs> Amen? You need God. That sabbatical that you take from God is when the devil will move in and, and create more, I don't know, more mess, a bigger mess in your life. Amen? 
We need to sit still and wait in the Lord. We need to we need to sit still in the presence, patiently waiting on God so that God can renew us. No Christian that is saved, that is born again, that is filled in the Holy Ghost should ever take time away from God. That's like taking, that's like never taking your car to the, to the gas station and expect to have fuel when you need it. Right. It's like n- never going to the refrigerator and get you some food and say, man, why am I so weak? <laughs> never drinking water and wonder, well, why, why don't I have any strength? What's happening? Why do I feel like I'm about to fall over? It's because you're taking a break from the things you need the most. And so as Christians tonight, we don't need to take a break from prayer. We don't need to take a break from Bible reading. We don't need to take a break from church. What we need to do is patiently wait in the presence of the Lord. Amen? He said when we do that, we will be renewed. And not only that, his second blessing, he said God will strengthen us. He will give us the ability. He said, he said you will mount up with wings as eagles. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. In other words, life and serving God becomes easier because if you ever see an eagle, I'm sure you did, when an eagle mount up, it don't take a lot of, lot of flapping of the wings. You just do a few, and they're gone. It's easy. And that's what he's saying. When you wait in God, serving God becomes easy. When you wait in the presence of the Lord, serving God becomes easy. It's easy to do the things of God because you've been in the presence of God. I've found in my own personal life, if I haven't prayed the way I should, it's hard to get up and do things for God. It's hard to go out and do something for God, to prepare a message or to get things. But man, when I'm praying and I'm walking with God, I get up in the morning, I pray. I go through the day praying. I spend time praying. I'm always pumped up. Messages is just coming to my mind. I take my book and I'm writing things out. But if I'm not in that state, that frame of mind, I'm begging God for a message by Sunday morning. <laughs> God, you need to talk to me. I got to go to church and preach. <laughs> I got to tell, I got to share this thing. And it's not coming. It's not coming because I haven't been waiting in the presence of the Lord. But man, when you're waiting in the presence, I don't know what I mean by waiting. I'm just talking. I'm walking. I'm going through the day, fellowshipping with God, you know. While you're cooking, talking to God. While you're cleaning, mowing the grass, talking to God. Driving down the street, talking to God. And you're doing all this. Your life is wrapped up in communication with God. And when you do that, life becomes easy. You can mount up with wings as eagles. You can do the work of the Lord with ease. You can serve God with ease. It's not a burden any longer. It's not a challenge because you've been patiently waiting on the Lord. Amen? And he said he will give us the ability to do things. We'll run and not be weary. We'll walk, we'll not faint. Endurance, we are preaching about last Sunday night. That's how endurance comes when we wait in the presence of the Lord. It is a blessing, it's, an, it's a real blessing to be able to sit still and wait in the presence of the Lord to where God come in and God begin to really minister to you things that you need. The Bible talked about us when we pray in the Holy Ghost. He said we don't always know what we need what we need when we pray. He, we don't always understand what the Spirit need. We don't always know what, God, what do I need? What is holding me? Why am I this way? Why does this happen in my life? And we don't always know what to, what to pray for. He said, but if you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you pray in the Holy Ghost language as you walk, as you spend the time praying in tongues, he said, the Spirit will begin to search you. And that comes when you wait in the presence of the Lord. Amen. That comes when you're there and you're waiting waiting in God and you're praying and seeking the Lord, all of a sudden the Holy Ghost will begin to search your heart and your mind and the Holy Ghost will begin to minister to your spirit the things that you need. He will begin to give you. A lot of times people think they need one thing, but really they need something else. Some people may think, well, I need confidence, but what you really need is you need some faith in God. Or I may need, I may need a, a strength, but really what you need is you just need to, to have that, that, that relationship with God to where God is the one that's given you what, you what you have need of. You will supply all the needs in your life. And so a lot of times we really don't know what we, need to, what we should ask for. But man, when we wait in the presence of God, patiently wait in there, and we're seeking God and we're praying and we're walking with God and talking with God, God will begin to minister to us. God will begin to minister to us. The Holy Ghost will begin to bless us. The Holy Ghost will begin to give us the things that we need. And so he said, you will run and not be weary. 
you will walk and you will not faint. He will give you the strength to cover great distance with ease. He will give you the ability to endure even when it seems like progress is slow. God will give you the help that you need. It comes from waiting in the presence of the Lord. So I'm talking about patiently waiting on God. It requires two things, and it's the two things that it will strengthen the most in our life. The two things everybody need. As James said, you have need of patience, right? He said you have need of patience, that when you have done the will of the Lord, you will receive the reward. James said we have need of patience. The scripture also said we have need of faith, for without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe. And these are the two things that comes when we wait in the presence of God. God gives us the patience. He helps us to control ourselves. He helps us to think clearly. He helps us to see things in a different light. He helps us to understand what is the right move to make. And so he built patience and faith when we wait on the Lord. Now David said it this way in the Psalms. We'll close with this verse tonight. I won't keep you long. Psalms 40 verses 1, 2, 3. One, two, and three. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. You hear that? But God, God is not hearing my prayer. God is not hearing my prayer. Well, have you waited patiently in the Lord? Or you just said a quick prayer and get up and run. <laughs> Let's get it done. I already prayed. Have you waited on the Lord? I'm talking about patiently waiting on God. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined. He said, as I was waiting on God, God was listening to me. Amen? Yeah. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. He, come to this man. he said, I wait for God. God heard me. God delivered me. And God, give me a song to sing. Amen. What a blessing when you wait on God. What I'm trying to say tonight is there is a blessing. There is a great blessing in patiently waiting on God. There will be renewing. There will be strength. God will encourage. Encourage us. God will give us the things that we need. God will hear us. God will deliver us. And most of all, God will cause us to rejoice in Him. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He heard me, and He, and he, and he heard me, and he, incl and he inclined unto me. In other words, he, as I was waiting on the Lord, this is how you read the, the, the verse. As I wait patiently on the Lord, God began to look at me and say, wait a minute. That person there is waiting on me. Let me let me pay him some attention. He inclined. He in, okay, all right. They've been they've been they've been, they're still they're still waiting. All right, that's good. And then he began to listen. He began to listen, and he began to minister to the person. We we'll make a quick prayer and go. Oh, you're gone already. <laughs> you didn't give me a chance to talk to you. You came and talked to me, but you didn't let me talk to you. You tell me what you want, but you didn't let me tell you what I want. You understand what I'm saying? There's a blessing in waiting on God. There's a blessing in waiting on God, not rushing. We just say, okay, God, what do you want? This is what I'm bringing to you, Lord, in prayer, but I'm going to wait and see what the Lord will say. I'm going to wait and see. And how will God speak to me? Well, it depends on every, every situation. I know how God talked to me because I've been developing a relationship with the Lord and learning how to follow the Lord. He may speak to you through the Word as you open the Bible. He may speak to you in various ways. He may speak to you through a message, different ways. But you have to learn to wait. Because there's two things every Christian need, faith and patience. Comes from waiting on the Lord. Let's spend some time in prayer. Let's wait on the Lord in prayer tonight. I should begin to play and sing. All of you that are joining us online tonight, let's wait on the Lord in prayer. There are things you've been praying about. God heard you. Just wait and see what the Lord will do. He will give you guidance and direction as you turn to the Lord. Father, thank you for this time to wait on you. Bless and accomplish your will. In Jesus' name.
Thank you. the privilege sharing the word of God with you tonight. Waiting, patiently waiting on the Lord. God will never disappoint us when we wait on Him. Amen. For all of you joining us online tonight, we do thank you. We pray that you have a wonderful week ahead. May God bless you and your family and keep His hand upon you. And remember to join us uh, Tuesday. Tuesday at 7.30 will be in Bible study in the book of Genesis. We'll continue about temptation. You all like temptation? We'll try to continue <laughs> wherever God leads. <laughs> we have a good night. We love you all. God bless you. Father, thank you for this service. Thank you. We give you all the praise and glory and honor. And we ask that you continue, Lord God, to have mercy upon us as we serve you and walk with you and labor for you. Continue to bless in the ways that you see please. We give thanks and praise to you. In Jesus' name.